Just a few days ago, my arcade dropped firmware 1.30 for the Atari Game Station Pro. Now, we already walked through the steps to upgrade your console and highlighted some of the key improvements. In that video, I asked if you'd be interested in a follow-up focusing specifically on how the GSP handles games you load onto that SD card, and lots of you requested it, so that is exactly what we're gonna get into right after this. This video brought to you in part by Tommy in the Order of Cosmic Champions. This exciting and heartwarming coming-of-age Gen X novel is available now. Check the link for more info. Hey there, welcome back to Gen X Grown Up. I'm John and I am a Gen X Grown Up. Thank you so much for taking the time to click on this video. From what we're seeing in this latest firmware, I think it's pretty fair now to say that my arcade has decided the ability to expand the GameStation Pro with our own games via that SD card slot isn't just a happy accident, but something they're willing to support and improve. After all, I see lots of commenters say that it's that very function that made them decide to buy the GSP in the first place, so I guess it makes sense. Now, if you're new to the GSP and haven't yet worked with installing your own game ROMs, I'm going to direct you to my first SD card expansion video linked right up there in the corner. Now, I'm going to assume here that you already know how to add games to the system and focus on changes to that experience. So, in this video, I'll run down four key improvements to SD card expansion of the GSP, and at the end of this video, give you my wish list for how future firmware updates might make things even better. Now, before I begin, I think it's important to point out that everything we'll look at here is icing on the cake. The Atari Game Station Pro already does everything that's advertised on the box, so all this SD card stuff is a bonus from my arcade, and we should think of it that way. As such, we'll see that not all of it's fully baked, but I, for one, am happy to be given added functions and features for my game ROMs, even if some of them seem to be a work in progress. Okay, let's start with navigation. You'll remember that at launch, you used to have to choose to either use your GameStation Pro in regular mode or SD card mode, and changing that required a restart. But now the two parts of the GSP experience are combined, kind of. <laughs> From the main GSP menu, if you hold both home and start on your controller, you'll be switched over to the SD card menu. And from there, if you hit home on the controller, it'll send you from the SD menu back to the regular menu. Now this might seem like a small thing, but I think it truly shows that my arcade is embracing this SD card stuff by making it easier to get in and out of either anytime you would like. Next up is folder support. Now you'll likely remember that during our initial upgrade video, we had to dump thousands and thousands of ROM files right into the root of that game folder. And that led me to some file prefixes and other tricks to help navigate the game list. Well, now the GSP supports not only folders, but subfolders too. You'll see here in my example, what I've done is I've just pretty much made a folder named each different platform that the GSP supports, and I throw the ROMs in there. The nice thing is, it's up to you how you name these. You can name it SNES or Super Nintendo or Super NES or whatever for, you know, for those folders, and it's entirely up to you. Luckily, gone are the days of that giant, like thousands of pages of ROMs to flip through, you know, left and right uh, as you go through the system. Now, let me show you an example of one subfoldering technique you can use. Now, if I pop into Atari 2600, you'll see that I've just sorted everything alphabetically. So if I want to go into uh, Find Adventure, I go into A, and then I can come down and find Adventure and play it. Now, of course, you back up with the B button. That's always been the case. There's a little glitch in this new folder layout, and that is you would think I tap the B button and it returns me back to the A folder to continue to browse. But instead, it drops me all the way back to the root of the games folder. And I need to go back into the 2600 folder and back into the A, and then see B brings me all the way back to the root. It's a little glitch. It's more annoying than anything. In like the arcade games, it's even more annoying because of buffering, but it's better, definitely better. Now that subfolders are used, it doesn't take nearly as much to index the SD card when you first jump in, but I think that's because they're only indexing the root and not the subfolders. You'll see if I jump into arcade games, uh, we just have to wait for a while. I'm gonna set the controller down and just sit and wait. I'm probably not gonna wait the entire time on camera because it just takes so long because inside of arcade games, I've made A through Z folders. It's at this point, it's indexing all of those files. So all I did was a delayed deferred, not eliminated. 
Hey, and about 30 seconds later, we finally made it inside of the folder. Now, uh, so I can show you what you do need to know. This is MAME in particular. So if I go into D, you'll see that I have the artwork and samples folders here as well. Now, this is up to you. The way I organize MAME alphabetically, you actually need to have any supporting files, config, artwork, samples, anything you need, needs to be in the folder where the ROM exists. So you can't just put them all in the root. You can't even just put them in the root of your MAME. If you're gonna organize them alphabetically like I did, you need to have artwork and samples for those games right here in the folder where they exist. So this is the operating directory. That being said, I've already done the work for my D directory, for example, because Donkey Kong is in here. And you can see I have the artwork, I have the samples that you'll hear when I put in a coin and push start. The game is fully functional, but you're going to have to put any supporting folders, as I said, in the same folder as any ROM that needs them. All right, now let's talk about newly supported console platforms. We already had at least 10 supported systems at launch, including Atari consoles, of course, uh, plus NES and Genesis, Game Boy, and more. But with firmware 1.30, four more major platforms are now supported. First up is the Game Boy Color, although, I think that was actually already supported in 1.20, the launch firmware, although we didn't talk about it last time. So I wanna mention that. So I guess maybe there's three new major platforms, but you can play your Game Boy Color games just using the file extension .gbc and they work great. Up next is the Sega Master System. Now that's been added and you can load those games right in your system, this time in a folder if you like, of course, and you just need to give those the file extension .sms and they work great. The two biggies though, and the ones that are kind of ready to play, but not quite. The first is Super Nintendo games. And if you put those in a folder or anywhere you want to put them, I guess in the games folder with the extension .sfc, I found that they work, launch and play great. Kind of, and I'll get to that. Let me talk about the other one, and that's TurboGrafx-16, the PC Engine games. Now that's a whole family of games, but as long as you load those ROMs in with the extension .pce, then you're gonna be fine. The challenge here in the last two platforms I'll mention has to do with controller support and not just the GSP controller, but even your own controller makes a lot of games on these two platforms nearly impossible to play. So here's a great example in Chase HQ for the TurboGrafx-16, right? So I'm gonna jump in my car. Now I have my Xbox controllers, I have all kinds of controls. So I can shift high and low, I can do that. I can hit the brake. You can see the brake lights coming on on my car. What I can do is gas. There's no button for gas. If I hit the Y button, look, it, oh, it, it tried to hit gas, but then it opened up the menu button. And I gotta get out of that, hit the gas button, and it opens up the menu button. It's because that button is hard mapped to the Y button here on these controllers. And it's overridden because both the game needs it and the GSP needs it. And look, and the menu doesn't even do anything because there's nothing to do. Remapping, as we'll talk about a little later, is something that desperately is needed for these. Same thing here in Donkey Kong Country for the Super Nintendo. So I have my uh, Diddy Kong buddy. Of course I can run and I can jump, I can do those things. I'm gonna switch to Diddy and instead I get the menu. <laughs> now it does happen after I close the menu, so you could argue it's almost doable, but <laughs> I don't want to pause the game when I hit those buttons. Yeah, and so I have to think, why would you add entire platforms where this button is occupied if, game, if my arcade didn't have a plan to eventually let us remap this or do something differently? Like, we know there's not enough buttons on this controller, but the console recognizes all these buttons. It's just that the one we need for so many functions on Super Nintendo and TurboGrafx-16, they're all tied up. So hopefully we can get a fix for that it's on my wish list coming up later. Now I'm gonna talk next about paddle games, but first I wanna mention that our video advent calendar, 24 Days of Pac-Man, is entering its last week as I record this. Each day leading up to Christmas, I've been publishing a quick two minute video highlighting a different Pac-Man themed toy or gadget from my gaming collection. You never know what it's gonna be, which I think is part of the fun. Now I will link to that full playlist right up in the corner so you can get caught up and join the fun leading up to the 25th. And if you're watching this after Christmas, well, you got to cheat, I guess. All 24 days are now available for you to watch. Okay, finally, let's talk about that previous underutilization of that nice built-in paddle dial on the GSP controller. For lots of Atari 2600 games, the paddle is simply the only way to go. So it was included on the packed-in controller. However, 
for games we add via the SD card slot, the paddle simply wasn't being recognized. Well, I have some great news. You have already seen how I've organized my ROMs into these folders and subfolders, but it turns out inside of the games folder, there is one specially named folder that will get that paddle work done for you. And it is Atari 2600 paddle. Every 2600 ROM you put into that folder will be launched with paddle support. Check this out. I've just thrown all of my paddle games in here. The first one I put in there, because that's how it sorts, Kaboom. So why don't we try Sub Kaboom? So here in Kaboom, the first thing I'm gonna do is open up this menu. Everything for the 2600 is now supported. Not only TV type, game difficulty, that paddle sensitivity is also supported now. As long as you put the ROM inside of that folder called Atari 2600 Paddle. So how does it work? Let's try it out. Works pretty good as far as I'm concerned. Now I wanna try one more here. I just only recently discovered that I liked Astro Blast when I was doing the M Network uh, tier list. So let's try some Astro Blast. <laughs> I mean, it works pretty doggone good. I will say it feels different, but it feels consistent and accurate and is able to control these 2600 games just as well as if it was a baked in game that came with the GSP in the first place. For someone like me, who is primarily treating the GSP as an Atari console, that's pretty much the biggest ad in this latest firmware as far as I'm concerned. Okay, before I let you go, I wanna talk about what I'd like to see in the next firmware update. Assuming, of course, there will be future updates. Again, I'm not expecting these changes because they're not part of the advertised function of the GSP. But since my arcade has already shown a willingness to invest a bit of time in the SD card features, we can hope, right? All right, firstly, this is not just SD related, but for the system overall, I would like to see the next update add some more Atari games to the main menus. We just saw Digital Eclipse do this with the Atari 50 anniversary celebration. That was an update that added more games into the system you already bought. So this would be great for everyone, not just hobbyists like us who add ROMs. It would give more value to the Game Station Pro. Just give us Berserk already. I mean, we know Atari has it. It's in license. Let's get it added. Second, I'd like to see the SD card navigation improved. Folder support is a tremendous step in the right direction but we have that back button glitch that I showed you and the fact that we still can't sort by name or have any sort of search feature. You know we're gonna load hundreds of ROMs on that card and paging through a sea of files which currently are only organized by date added to the card, that could be a nightmare. And while you're at it, maybe buffer any folders you have indexed so we don't have to index them over and over every time we navigate, that'd be pretty cool. And finally, and most importantly, controller button remapping. By now, the Brain Trust has determined that the GSP is using an embedded version of RetroArch and associated cores. And we all know that RetroArch supports controller mapping. If you're not familiar, all I'm talking about here is redefinition of how each button on a controller is recognized by a particular system. Now this would not only make previously supported systems more playable, but it would get us over the hump of that Super Nintendo and TurboGrafx-16 problem I noted earlier. We have shown we're willing to bring our own wired Xbox or PlayStation controller to the party. Now, let us define which button does what to truly make the GSP the commercial emulation powerhouse it looks to be evolving into. What do you think of these new features? How are you organizing your ROM folders? What's on your future firmware wish list? Please let me know down in the comments. And in the meantime, I'll throw some links over my shoulders here and here to some other GameStation Pro coverage I've done recently. I certainly hope you found something to enjoy in this video, and I cannot wait to talk to you again next time. Bye-bye.